So hi, I'm Avi Friedman, one of the co-founders and uh, CEO of Kentic. We're a network analytics and visibility startup. I won't ask everybody to reintroduce themselves, but if you want to see who's here, you can go to the last segment. Um, uh, before I gave a brief summary of what we're trying to do as a company, uh, now I'm going to give a quick tour of the Kentec Detect product. I'm going to go very high level because we're going to do some things on DDoS detection and anomaly detection. Separately, we're going to talk a little bit about performance and security applications and also about sort of dig down and for people that want to get nerdy with the data, um, how we do that and what kind of things people do. But I'll give you a brief overview. And then I'll actually talk a little bit about our roadmap um, and uh, um, would love to have that be a conversation, including our negative roadmap. I think it's important as a startup to know what you're planning on not doing uh, in the short term, um, and uh, then we'll be on. So, this I will come back to. This is actually an example of using our API to get flow data, and as we talked about beforehand, we call this a FAD a funding augmentation device, uh, we really set a challenge of how could we make a map that, that, that the generals and CEOs could like to have in their knock, but that actually got at real data and linked directly to the portal. Um, has anyone heard the term pew pew map? It's a security state, a term of art that means the useless like missiles, packets as missiles going towards each other. Um, so there's a lot of resentment against that. So we, we took it as a challenge to do that. And this is just using our API. Um, this is the portal. And let me make sure that's um, showing up OK. I apologize, is a little small on this display. So do, do, do. so there's um, three or four ways to get information, insights, alerts with Kentic. One of them is to start and log in and use the portal. And some people have dashboards like this that are up in their knock um, or emailed to them or people that they want to see what's going on, uh, like executives with KPIs. Um, and the rest of the portal functionality. There's an API through which you can get everything that, that um, people want. And there's both a RESTful API and you can actually connect with a Postgres client and the whole system looks like a big online Postgres database if that's how you really want to script against and use the system. Um, and then there's an alerting system that can call out and integrate with things like Radware and A10 that do DDoS mitigation and control. Because one of our negative uh, roadmap things right now is we're not doing route control. It's something I did back in 2000 when there was NetVMG and Route Science and Sockeye was a spinoff of Akamai. Um, we have customers that do that using the API to say, show me where the retransmits are high, let me change the AS, change the routing to that AS. Um, but again, we're not doing that primarily today. There's startups that are focusing on that. So typically people start and go into a dashboard view. The, the major difference between what we're doing and a lot of the other systems is that because there's actually a you know, a couple petabytes of data and a lot of the recent data even in RAM sitting behind it, we can start at an element of a dashboard view, go into the data explorer, which Jim will cover more fully, and it's the same data, and we can even pick a, uh, we can even change dimensions. So we can say instead of AS number, I want to see down by um, prefix, and I can requery that, and it's just going to go out to the system and pull that data. And I can add arbitrary filters. I can say, and I should, I forgot, I shouldn't have done IP address, because this is doing in adder lookups on all the 32s, so it takes a little bit longer. Um, and I can add filters. So I can say, for this IP address, um, let me just focus on that and show that by the destination uh, country and you know, resume. So, we don't think that everyone always wants to go in and look at every level, but if you ever try to debug something, and a lot of our customers, this comes up, there's a DDoS attack, you get an alert, there's some static views, and then you want to double click and see what's going on, and then the data isn't there because it's all been aggregated away. That's very frustrating for people. So if you've seen people build systems um, on top of basically RRD type systems or sticking aggregates of network data into um, uh, graphite, you wind up getting stuck with these kind of fixed views, uh, and people don't like that. So we have a um, data explorer that Jim will show a little bit more of the deep dive on that you can really add 
you can have um, as many devices as you'd like, and I apologize, we don't have a 100 inch display. Um, so here we're actually taking a no snickering, a soup 723BXL catalyst, um, two hosts, and a, um, and a ASR, and putting all that data together. So in our back end, we decided to be non-fussy about nulls. So if we have data coming from NetFlow v5, and then we have data coming from a load balancer that holds, knows the URL, um, we will just pretend that there had been that data on the NetFlow source, and just that it was all nothing. It won't show up in the aggregates, um, because a lot of our customers, there's a lot of vendors, I think, that get trapped in the intellectually beautiful way everything needs to be, and I agree that packets as a source of truth is awesome if you can do it, but a lot of our customers are never gonna put um, really expensive packet capture switches everywhere. They're never gonna put inline appliances everywhere because they have 30 by 10 gig and 10 by 40 gig at every pop. So um, our view is start with somewhere and if you see value from being able to double click on something then stick something in. It could be an international link. It could be the outside of your data center. It could be inside of a in front of a customer if you're a service provider, and be able to put all that together. So that, that's something we think is important. Um, we decided right now to um, uh, you know to, to treat v4 and v6 as this sort of the same. So we have a cheat. If you say 128, it it, it means 32 in IPv4 land, and it'll treat it as the same in the flow. A lot of the flow world, um, those are different columns. Uh, but you know, most of the time IPv6 is not as much of an issue, but we've already seen people have um, security people doing things in IPv6 to avoid detection, and a lot of tools don't actually, uh, don't actually capture that. So that's the query editor, and Jim will go into that a little bit more. Um, uh, another, actually another thing I'll show, um, we have a lot of different dimensions that we can take. Now we do know context, so if I deselected the hosts, I'd lose the client latency, server latency, application latency retransmits. That we only get today from NProbe on a server or a sensor. Um, soon we'll do adapters to take it from other data sources. Um, again, as I mentioned, I'd rather be more broad and then just not be able to show performance data for some elements than require it from everything. We have another view um, which uh, we call analytics, which we'll do a, a little bit of a dive into in a little bit, which is um, we take a snapshot of the network because it's actually more than we can do via just one SQL query, where we're actually looking across the infrastructure and saying, where's the traffic going? Now today, this is primarily focused on eBGP. Um, but we're going to be doing one which is IBGP focused as well for people who are looking at the WAN. Or I'd say the majority of our customers who have really large data center deployments are looking more towards uh, BGP, Calico, keep it in layer three um, for scale. So it would work sort of the same way. Again, in our negative roadmap, we could go down an infinite list of IGPs trying to get support. Um, and our view is we'll do LLDP plus flow next year for that kind of visibility. But we'll talk about it, but you know, things that can jump out at you are like, oh, that AS over here that I get to through this transit provider, maybe I should bring them in. Maybe I should, I should connect them more closely. Um, and if we actually, in the data explorer, we could redo this. This is a static view. We could refocus on latency, and then the width will be latency. And then again, you could see where there's a problem. So our view would be, we might integrate with a partner. So you could click on it and say, reroute, just like we do with some with um, DDoS mitigation. We will be doing um, a little bit with the get PCAP and send it to Wireshark or whatever your, whatever your uh, favorite thing is. So one primitive, and uh, one primitive that a lot of our customers think is important is being able to describe the traffic data, the flow data, and uh, by policy. So you guys are familiar with what BGP communities are. They're just numbers that you put on that have the, the math nerd term would be bilateral semantics. Like only you and I know what they mean. They don't mean anything globally except no export and no advertise and stuff like that. Um, we take that out and make it ASCII. 
So um, we have ASCII tags, which you could think of as like BGP communities, but that um, you can set based on, and then this emerging threats is something that Jim created with an API, and it's a list of prefixes. Um, or uh, it could be matching the AS path or communities. So you could have Europe, you could have application A, and you can have multiple of them on every flow, and that allows you to sort of slice and dice. Um, one of the things, because we launched more for people that were happy to use APIs to do integration and even put in their own portals. One of the things we're doing now uh, on our enterprise catch-up is um, to be able to do what we call multi-multi-tenancy. Uh, to be able to say, this user can only see things that have this tag in it. Um, so it's their sliced view of the network, which gets important in, in organizations that have a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, places. So everything is API-able. Um, including setting up devices, um, but I'll, uh, you know, so we have dashboards for that. We do take SNMP to correlate flow to pull interface names, so you can, you know, have autocomplete on names, uh, but we're not trying to be a complete SNMP uh, tool. So some other things we'll show you later, alerting system, how we do anomaly detection, um, some deeper dive on the dashboard, a deeper dive on peering analytics, um, but if you have any other questions about the raison d'etre or um, how we get data or what kind of people do anything with it, um, feel free. Yeah. So a question about a potential yeah. I'm just curious because I'm not 100% sure what space you're in. A company called Packet Design, uh -huh. is that, what's the differentiator? Can you maybe summarize briefly what a differentiator with them would be? Sure. Maybe? Yeah, so we know them. Uh, we actually have some foes, folks that have worked there. Foes. Um, what? <laughs> like you said, we have some foes that have worked there. Oh, we, we, we don't have some flows that have worked there. We have some folks that have worked there. Um, and uh, it's funny because like some other network uh, space stuff, started in academia and came into the space. So they take a more um, aggregate view of flow in that they throw away most of the other details and really use it for traffic engineering. So they're trying to look at IP address um, to IP to IP flow, and I think they might do port, but they can store years of data on one appliance basically because they're not keeping the full richness of it for performance or security. They do very deep, I would say again, more for traffic engineering is where we see them being very heavily used, um, and they do all the IGP decoders. So that's sort of the example with respect that I think of when I say I'm not gonna go down that path. Um, I think we can, on the IGP side, get a lot of what we need from LLDP in addition to the IBGP for people that are doing it. Um, and we don't yet work together, we've talked about it, but um, they also take a licensed software model. Uh, they're converting their QT, GTK, X11, whatever, their, their UI to HTML5. Um, you know, there's other companies, broadly speaking, part of the problem is what is this space called? Every time I try to describe to someone in my family what we're doing, they say, but you guys built the internet, how could you not know what it's doing? And you just go, <laughs> you know, like, it's hard to explain. So I'd appreciate any, any great insights. Um, you know, basically it's, we call it, from the business people we say, look, there's a lot of intelligence you can get from traffic to make your business strong. Uh, a lot of time that you don't waste. And then magic, what happens is web companies, they just go, awesome, we need that, we've been trying to build it, we can't hire those people, here's the money. Uh, enterprise have a requirement, let's keep flow forever because it's cheaper than PCAP, awesome, here's money. Service providers, they need to peer with people, so there's these use cases we do. And visibility is a very broad space. There's Carradine and Wandel that do, again, automated TE stuff bought by uh, Cisco and Juniper, a um, bunch of people in and around the space. Do you, do you have any, um, are, are you just ingesting data from other sources or do you have any ways of generating that data yourself? So we partnered, we used to have my beautiful C code that is no longer in, in production um, to take packets and generate flow. And today we just decided um, NTOP's got a great roadmap of that kind of functionality um, and there's a lot to do including integrating with controllers and taking underlay and overlay and they do uh, SQL decode and HTTP decode. So we've integrated with them. So today we take IP fix with them. They're integrating to speak our untemplated binary protocol, uh, but we don't, we don't typically generate today. So you're kind of like, you're kind of like if, if Grafana and InfluxDB had a network focused baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, 
you know, this is, um, this is Grafana. Um, now our first integration is, is a little bit more flexible than Top Talkers. And this data is sitting on our infrastructure. It doesn't, the next one will have a filter. So you can say where and subfilter. But this is Grafana. And um, we, could, we could look at any of those things we, we wanted to look at, AS path, um, IP address, and it'll go in and re-get that um, from any of the devices that we want to look at. Or we could look at it in bits or packets. Or for DDoS, uh, a lot of it is unique dest or source IP. So, um, we're a source that you can get that network data and put it out. But if you tried to take every IP fix template and make it a tag in a time series database, mm -hmm. it'll fall over. We tried it with OpenTSDB, InfluxDB, Prometheus, yeah. um, the Cassandra-based stuff, the, I forget the Netflix one. Um, they're just not, not oriented towards that. And the approach we take is we just take all of them and index them as a clustered column store, but more a database approach because we don't know in advance. Basically, if you take that and put it in a time series database, you lose the login. The aggregates, you have to sort of scan all the data, right. as opposed to a column store where you sort of say, this is the query, and then it can do a distributed top, and then pull them in, and then, gotcha. and then do the aggregate. Do, 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 let me find my PowerPoint. So just uh, to continue the discussion of placing what we're doing and for who, I talked a little bit about it. Um, you know, again, someone says, oh, are you guys a NetFlow tool? We say, yes, we're a badass NetFlow tool. But NetFlow is more than you think it is, because a lot of people have a very narrow view of NetFlow as this one thing. Um, you know, we've said to Cisco, hey, that awesome titration thing, the $3 million thing that talks to two of your switches that are just DA, <laughs> give us that, you know, tell us what that protocol is. And they say, NetFlow's bad. And we say, it's not NetFlow. It's just a stream of data that has some formatting that we could take out and store it some level of aggregation, right? You know, um, that, that's sort of our view eventually is that it's all one kind of thing. And I think that matches with people who are trying to build their own, uh, don't get religious about it. So we had the idea two and a half years ago, actually a little bit more before the company existed. I had written something in C, my co-founder, um, Ian Pai, um, who will talk next, um, rewrote it in Go to keep me from playing with it because I don't like Go because I'm old, um, and, uh, and, uh, and put Postgres in front of it so it would be a standard, not just a SQL-like. Um, and we've been, we've been starting with the most technical people on the planet. And it's interesting when you talk to venture capitalists, they're actually not impressed that you can sell to the most technical people on the planet because the market you know, if you look at NetScout's revenue, it's not mostly people that would go build their own. Um, and so, you know, that's an interesting transition for us. What's happened is we've been dealing with large enough companies now that they say single sign-on. And as a CEO, when they say, we want 500 users using the system, I go, awesome. But then what's their system? So how do you integrate? Role-based access control didn't start with that. The multi-multi-tenancy that really defined the, the traffic level, uh, you know, shape that you want a user or a group to be able to access. Um, threat feeds, as I mentioned, um, we're not going to say it's an end-to-end -end complete security solution, but a lot of carriers, um, you know, we, we have some partners we work with that can tell you pretty reliably, is this machine part of a botnet? And then the carrier wants to, again, revenue, go to their customer and say, hey, we detected this very helpfully, and we have a service that can help with that. Or um, for the web company folks, you'll know what I mean when I say corp versus prod. So we typically deal with the prod side, which is the packets that are the revenue, but they all have a corporate network with typically appliances and stuff like that. Uh, and then taking data into Splunk and whatever, and then people say, wait, could we export this data to Splunk? And then we say, yes, here's how, but also why not take the flow from that and take thread feeds and do that kind of stuff. Um, custom columns, again, our earliest customers want to be able to define their own flow sources and send Nginx data and stuff like that. From us on a product side, we're going to say like AVC we're going to take data from, you know, ACI, like which specific things we're going to do that from. Um, some large networks who run um, BGP next top self between 200 pops get flow only at ingest and somehow want to know where the flow is going the other side of their network. Um, the, 
is uh, basically that gets into the package design a little bit about how do you elegantly figure out what the routing was on all those things. We're doing that for BGP, but not for all the IGPs. But there's BGP LS and there's things that we can use to be able to take that data without having to parse the IGP. That's the, that's the approach that we've taken. And most of our customers start with the peering, they start with the, um, the DDoS, but a lot of folks are using it for data center and WAN, and we're behind on some things like heat maps of Tor in a clause architecture and you know, let's, let's take the things that are on this switch. These two switches are congested because there's these two machines that are talking to each other. Let's move the load. Let's signal our controller and move the load. So a bunch of things to do. Uh, next year, um, uh, global context. So we have to be very privacy sensitive about this. Uh, and I know you guys saw another company that was doing a little bit more on the wireless and the, and the campus side, but DDoS attacks, scanning, performance to Boston. From us, it's also a little bit more server side or user side, like the customer will either care about their eyeballs, uh, how is Apple doing for everybody, or they'll care about their servers, which is how is Comcast Boston doing for everybody. Those are things we're gonna do, um, but um, it's just a sequencing issue. The link to PCAP, uh, again, I don't really wanna be an appliance vendor, but everyone who sells PCAP storing appliances wants $100,000 for them, and we could build one on NProbe for, you could build a, a 10 gig line rate generator for 3K. Uh, again, I, per, per other presentations you guys saw, I've tried DPDK and I go apeshit about the, the spinning. You have to tie up all these cores for spinning for just observation, like for routing, it's awesome. But we use PF ring, you know, from Luca for it. So, um, uh, uh, you know, it should be a $10,000 box to store PCAP and we'll integrate with something like that and user identity and some other things. And Hang on, did, yeah. so you're gonna build that box? No, no, I'm- Do it cheaper? Or? I will if no one will partner with me and sell it affordably. <laughs> okay. What I call it is enterprise free. Like make 50% margin and sell it for, you know, because people don't really want to build this stuff on their own, but it needs to cost ten to $20,000, not a hundred to $200,000, and then people will deploy it. And if no one will do it, then I will do it. Um, there's an analog on the peering side. There's this, I forget what it's called. A bunch of nerds got together and said, we're going to make peering points, and all they wanted was Equinix to drop their price. And they got Equinix to drop their price, so they won. So I might have to do that, but I don't really want to sell hardware. Um, so our negative roadmap, um, test traffic. Uh, there's companies that do uh, catch point, thousand eyes, they do synthetic traffic. Um, ultimately, we'll probably partner with someone to bring in the ping and trace route for people that want that, but our view is start with the actual, not the what if. I don't need to know that there's a problem in some router in Germany if I, if I can't, don't know, have any traffic running through it. It's good for debugging, not for monitoring. Config management and push, huge problem. Um, TLF was bought, who knows what's going on in okay. Cisco land. Uh, people are still using it, but now there's all the, there's the open source stuff for that, including some people in this room that are working on it, which is awesome, but it's not there yet, and people ask us about it, and we say, no, we're not gonna do that. Um, we want to know what's configured, and again, on policy, I, I might wanna take the flow and then look at that, but um, like a Red Seal or a Veriflow or someone like that, that, that says what should be, well, yes, you should combine the what should be with what is. We're just not gonna do that all ourselves right now. Um, the metrics engine, I think there's a lot of programs out, systems out there to do that. Um, we get asked all the time large scale SNMP because people don't want Windows software, which is what uh, a lot of the scalable stuff is from the enterprise, uh, not doing that. And the route optimization, that's something we're gonna partner on. So um, that's sort of our view. Um, and uh, I, have the, uh, I have the time, so. I will skip the portal integrations and mention again um, that uh, the viewers can get an awesome uh, NetFlow t-shirt. <laughs>